Welcome back to Black Bear Forge and the Hook of the Week. It's another brisk October day today, and at the rate we're going, by the time Christmas gets here, it's going to be 70 degrees with bluebirds and wildflowers. But without further ado, let's get started on this week's Hook of the Week. There isn't much left in what used to be a bucket here. I think I'm going to use these two pieces of material, which only leaves these two, and then we can get rid of that old bucket. Now what I envision from these two pieces of material is another hook and a back plate sort of a scenario here. This piece has already been forged into a dome. I don't know what I was making, but it's left over from some other project. But it still has this nice round bar left here, and I think I'm just going to leave that intact and tinning that into this. But this is going to need to be a lot smaller to be a halfway decent back plate, so we're going to have to forge that out. And this piece starts off as half by one and a half by two. So that's 13 millimeters by 35 millimeters by 50 millimeters. And this looks like it was originally a half inch square bar, so it was originally 13 millimeter square bar, and it's just been spread out so it's three quarters or 20 millimeters wide, and it was done in a swedge, so it's half round on one side, flat on the other side. So we'll head over to the forge and use that to warm the shop up a little bit. That little forging area really does stay pretty comfortable, even when it's 20 degrees in the shop. I'm just going to start by thinning out this back plate piece. I think I'm going to leave it fairly heavy right in the center. Not completely different than some other things we've done. And I just keep working around in a circle here until I get that as thin as I'd like. Probably about an eighth inch along the edges. You can tell as the edges swell out whether or not you're even. If it's getting a big curve here, you're thinning it too much there. And if it's still dipped in, you're thinning too much at the edges or the corners. Just keep an eye on it and you can figure out where your energy is going. It's bowing up a little in the back because it was such a thick piece. So I'm going to have to sink that down into something, I think. And now the main thing is just trying to get everything even. This may take a little grinding on the edges. It's always hard to get the corners to come out just right. But it's not too bad.
It's also getting a little harder to hold on to. Now by turning the good side down and working from the back, I can kind of straighten out that bow and smooth out my bevels. That's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and put a little tenon on the end of this. I thought about just drilling a half inch hole in the back plate and then plug welding this in there, but I think a tenon will look better. And we've looked at doing tenons quite a bit in the past. Let's go square. And we'll go octagon. And then we'll round it up. The shoulder rarely ends up perfect, so we'll use a monkey tool to work that down. Need to make it a little smaller so the monkey tool fits. Now the monkey tool fits. I'll just start that lightly and then get it hot again. You want a fairly high heat. You're actually trying to upset that in just a little bit. It pays to turn this around and make sure you're going straight in every axis here. Stop and straighten it out if you're not. You just want to do that until you get the shoulder you'd like to have there. I'm pretty happy with that. I just want to clean up this end very lightly, make it a little bit more refined than the way it was found in the bucket. But I don't want to mess up my bevel too much here. Just lightly draw it out on the end is all I really want to do. And I want to offset it just a little on the horn of the anvil like that. And using our little vice bending jig here, go ahead and bend this up. And of course the camera is right in the way. I'm leaving that domed surface on the outside. I'm going to be real careful as I still have the camera in the way. I'm going to be real careful as I curl this up not to damage it. But sometimes some light hammer blows help to keep everything just the way you want it. And for this one, I've got something special in mind. So I'm going to bend the hook back. Something like that. I think I'm going to go just a little bit further with that back bend. If I can get in there. That's more what I want. It's a little bit crooked, so I'm going to put it in the vise while there's still some heat. And I can straighten that out nicely. I'm going to mark the center for my hook placement. I'm just going to put two screw holes in this, top and bottom.
We're going to countersink the back to make that tenon rivet flush. It just needs to be a little filing on the tenon. It doesn't quite fit in the hole. As you assemble something like this, it's a good idea to take your monkey tool and make sure that tenon is set nice and snug and all the way down. Take a look at it and double check my eye. And quarter inch, quarter inch we might be able to set cold, but we'll go ahead and do it hot anyways. Anything under a quarter inch I usually do cold, anything over a quarter inch I usually do hot. Quarter inch sometimes I go one way, sometimes I go the other. Slip going in the vise there. It's an old wore out vise. Let's see if these aluminum jaws will hold that any better. That's better. have our hook and we've managed to really bend it up there because it was held in the vise so I'm gonna have to straighten that back out. It's one of the problems with the uh, prototyping hooks as part of videos is you're never really sure where the little problems might end up. After you've made a few of any of these things you have all that stuff figured out and it's not a problem anymore. little kinks out of it there. I think that will still work. Now somebody out there who's been paying close attention to what I've done today is thinking shouldn't that back plate be the other way? Didn't you assemble that sort of 90 degrees off? Yes I did and I did that completely on purpose because this is a special purpose hook. I made this to hold my broom. Yeah, I know, it looks like I don't use a broom around here too often, but most of the floor is still dirt. You could certainly turn this hook the other way, and even with the back plate going horizontal, on a solid wall you could hang it, but it would be better if the screw holes were in line vertically so that they mounted up with a stud in the wall, if that's the way you're going to hang the thing. But like I say, this was a special purpose hook just to hang the broom on, and that's just because we've made so many coat hooks and regular old ordinary wall hooks. I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you hadn't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Ring the bell next to the subscribe button if you want to be notified when I make new videos. If you'd like to provide financial support for the channel, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free and will remain free. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then try to make time in your day to get out to your shop, stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we will see you next Sunday for the conclusion of Hook of the Week, bucket number one. There are more buckets to follow, so it's not over yet.